Greetings everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Royal Navy Battleship line. This is the Tier 8 Monarch class of battleships, and for those of you doing a double take after watching the King George V video, uh, that's to be expected. And well, the reasons for that are quite simple. This ship, well, for one, it never existed in any real form. It was basically what the King George V would have been had the Washington and London Naval Treaties not been around. And with that, really the only changes that happen in-game for this ship are we get better concealment by virtue of the Tier 8 concealment module, and we get 15-inch guns over uh, the 14-inchers that are on King George V. Literally, well, almost every other stat is basically the same. I mean... The, these ships are so frighteningly similar, it's hard to really tell them apart. So, as you can imagine, there's not going to be any service history because these ships never sailed in this form. But if you're looking for more detailed information about how this ship would have basically been set up by the Royal Navy, uh, go check out the first part of the King George V video in which I talk about the design history of it. And that'll give you a little bit better insight into the reasons why this configuration was not chosen over the King George V configuration that actually became the King George V class of battleships. So, uh, Monarch, uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to skip on ahead uh, straight to the uh, in-game play style. Uh, I don't know where <clears throat> Wargaming got the idea for this ship, but let, let's be honest with... I'll be honest with you here. Um, it's bad. I mean, it, it's really bad. If you took King George V and up-tiered it constantly into Tier 9 and Tier 10 fights, uh, I still think you would be better off as a ship, simply because nobody's expecting 14-inch guns to work at Tier 10. Uh, in this ship, you've got 15-inch guns, and that kind of comes with the expectation that the guns are actually going to do what 15-inch guns do. This isn't the only battleship at this tier that actually has 15-inch guns. You know, you've got the Bismarck, which has it. The Tirpitz, which is the sister ship to the Bismarck. They have 15-inch guns that are very usable. This ship? No. So this ship's gunnery is absolutely terrifyingly bad. It is extremely bad. Um, accuracy is terrible outside of point-blank range, and damage output is also very unreliable, both in high explosive and in armor-piercing capabilities. I would much rather play the Tier 7 King George V, because at least there, I know that the 14-inch guns aren't the world's best at that tier. However, I also recognize the fact that at that tier, I'm going to see a lot less Tier 8 and Tier 9 matches and a lot more Tier 5 and Tier 6 matches than at Tier 8, where Monarch is constantly in Tier 10 fights. Uh, I think in my time playing this ship, I think I ended up in maybe one match that was not a Tier 8, 9, and 10 match, which is pretty much what tier 8 is these days. So this ship is definitely not a tier 8 ship. Um, in fact, the only major changes, like I said, we've got 15-inch guns now. Um, we have more AA, and it's stealthier. Like, all the major stats are the same. Same hit point pool, same torpedo damage reduction, uh, you know, same max speed, same turning circle. It's just... It's the same ship, so you basically are grinding through King George V twice. And that's really frustrating for me. Um, the ship offers nothing over King George V. The, what, what, I mean, what it does offer at Tier 8 does not make up for the fact that this is a Tier 7 battleship shoehorned into Tier 8. Um, the concealment, I mean, it's 10% it's different, right? So, okay. So instead of being, you know, 12 kilometers, it's 10.9. <laughs> That's fantastic, and we'll, we'll talk about that more in the video, but in the rest of this. But it, it's just not the same. So with those changes, you know, what really actually of that matters? Well, as we already talked about the 15-inch guns and their lack of accuracy and the lack of damage output. Uh, about the only thing the 15-inch guns seem really useful for is occasionally starting a fire. 
And it, even that's not consistent with flags even to promote fire starting. So I, I don't, <laughs> I, I struggled. I'll be honest. I struggled a lot with this ship. It just did not have the same flair that King George V had just a tier lower. Uh, detection range that, that 10.9 kilometer detection range is fantastic for a battleship. Unfortunately, it needs every bit of that 10.9 kilometers and in range in order to actually hit the targets you're aiming at. And to do damage to them, you need to be extremely good with placing shots, and it's just not a fun ship to play. Uh, if Wargaming decreased this or increased the Sigma on this to like, I don't know, 2.1, maybe, <laughs> maybe I could see the ship being viable as a tier 8, but right now I just, it, it's bad. It really is bad. That detection range really doesn't come into, ha into handy. And as far as any aircraft defense goes, um, it has more AA than King George V. Yes, that's true. And the six-barreled 40-millimeter Bofors mount somehow does more damage per mount. It does twice as much damage per mount as the quad mount does for the U.S. Navy in terms of DPS per mount, which makes no sense to me because it only has two extra barrels. And to my knowledge, uh, the, the mounts that these six barreled mounts were not really the, the world's best mounts for AA anyway. So I don't know what that's all about. And carriers, there's still not enough there to keep a carrier from just absolutely running right on through you and just absolutely destroying you. Even maxed out in AA defense with a captain spec for it, I don't think this ship can hit a 100 AA rating. Not that, that that rating means a whole lot, aside from just giving you a general idea of how strong the AA is. That means it's not nearly as strong as the U.S. Navy. Woohoo! <laughs> We're not going to get replaced. You're not going to see this uh, out AA a North Carolina or an Alabama or Massachusetts if that ship ever comes. Um... I, it's not going to happen. So, I don't know. Overall, really frustrated with the ship, and I'm so glad to be rid of it. <laughs> I don't know of anything else to say. So, let's talk about stats. Um, Stats-wise, uh, 60,500 hit points, which is exactly the same as the final hull for King George V. Uh, armor, this is one area that's changed. We now have up to 457 millimeters of armor, but guess where it's at? It's on the back of the turrets. Oh, actually helps to get one that shows there. So basically the most useless area. Uh, your primary uh, places that take damage. Yeah, that's all exactly the same. I mean, I guess angled and facing up against other battleships. I mean, I guess it's actually pretty resilient because you really only have a couple of sections uh, that are 32 millimeter, but in terms of HE damage, this thing just soaks up high explosive like crazy. Um, I, it, it, it has zero durability at all. And if you're not perfectly angled in this ship, you know, you're, you should be expecting, especially from battleship fire, 6k minimum every single time it hits you. It's kind of frustrating. Torpedo damage reduction, 24%. Uh, artillery, we have our 15-inch 45 caliber guns with an 18.1 kilometer range. They have a 25-second reload time. Um, 6,300 HE shell damage with a 35% fire chance. AP shell damage of 11,900. Both have the same shell velocity. Um, problem is, is that accuracy figure, that maximum dispersion of 225 meters might be tighter than what, like, the U.S. Navy can achieve. However, the Sigma value is such that it is extremely hard to hit with the ship. I, I just... It, it's not a good thing. Secondary battery is the same eight dual 134mm guns. 5.3 kilometer range when you uh, start throwing on mods and stuff. Really not much to write home about there. Uh, not something that I would recommend in the ship. Is I would not recommend a secondary build. Any aircraft defense, this is the one place where things kind of stepped up to the extreme on the Royal Navy battleships. Uh, Monarch finally sees a fairly healthy amount of anti-aircraft. So it starts with 22 single 20mm Orlikens, goes up to 8 dual 20mm Orlikens, 8 dual 40mm Bofors, 4 sextuple, that's 6-barreled, 
40 millimeter Bofors, and then of course those eight dual 134 millimeters. AA bubble starts out with, and this is without the any aircraft uh, range module, which if you want to play this ship with a little bit more any aircraft range, you can, but without it, it's going to be four and a half kilometers for those 134 millimeters. Bofors, three and a half kilometers and then two kilometers for the 20 millimeters that's pretty standard for those gun mounts the 134 is really not contributing much to the aa until basically they're right on top of you uh anyway max speed of 28 knots 790 meter turning radius which is okay uh the ship really feels lazy at the helm like it just does not want to change directions very well 12 second rudder shift time, which is actually pretty respectable if the rudder actually did anything. Uh, detection range by sea of 10.9 kilometers, which is unprecedented for a battleship. But like I said, you kind of have to get that close to actually make the guns do any work. Uh, detection range by air of 9.7 kilometers. So taking this over to our upgrades, in the first upgrade slot, I am running Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 for the 100% increase in all of my anti-aircraft mounts hit point pool. Uh, this is really quite necessary if you want your anti-aircraft to do anything. Uh, at this point, you know, your AA bubble is, is pretty respectable, especially when fully kitted out for it. So there's no reason not to spec into, into this for the first tier. Uh, the caveat to that always is going to be running preventative maintenance on the captain. That preventative maintenance allows you to, uh, Ditch Main Armaments Mod 1 for Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. So Main Armaments Mod 1, you know, that would be your option if you're not running Preventative Maintenance. That's the 20% reduction in the risk to your main battery becoming incapacitated, 50% increase in its hit point pool, and 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair it. Preventative Maintenance more or less takes care of this, which allows us to run Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 to buff the hit point pool of our uh, anti-aircraft mounts. Magazine Mod 1, if you are in fear of turning into the hood, you could run this, but it's a battleship and detonations are pretty rare in battleships. Usually requires torpedoes hitting, you know, basically under the turrets. In the second slot, I'm running Damage Control Systems Mod 1, which is a 3% reduction in the chance of flooding as well as the amount of damage you take from torpedoes as well as a 5% reduction in the chance of starting on fire. This is the only modification at this slot that I would recommend on a battleship. Propulsion Mod 1 and Steering Gears Mod 1, you know, both of these things, your engines and your rudders, don't get taken out enough to really justify either one of these mounts when you're playing a battleship. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of your main battery. This is, if you're planning on doing damage, absolutely critical. Uh, like I said, <laughs> earlier, the ship is not known for its accuracy. Uh, it's downright frustrating how inaccurate the ship is. I think Bismarck is more accurate, even with Naming Systems Mod 1. That's going to be, you know, reduce your dispersion by 7%. You also get the added benefit of uh, plus 5% to the secondary battery range, as well as minus 5% to the dispersion of your secondary battery. Really not uh, that nice of an upgrade, you know, secondaries, eh, the ship's not a secondary build candidate. The only other mod that I would run at this in this upgrade slot is AA Guns Mod 2 for the 20% increase in the firing range of your anti-aircraft mounts. And that's if you are just absolutely getting decimated by after carrier, after carrier, after carrier, throw AA Guns Mod 2 on there. Push that AA uh, out an additional 20% and have at it. In the fourth slot, I am running Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time. Um, without this, it's about 15 seconds for the rudder shift time. That's um, a bit long <laughs> for a Tier 8 battleship. I'd, I'd much rather avoid being hit altogether. This just helps you get through those... Oh my goodness, I have to turn around right now moments a little bit quicker. Um, but that's what I would run. You know, these uh, this other mod, Propulsion Mod 2, uh, really doesn't impact the ship terribly much. Uh, you're not going to find yourself bow camping too much with it. Damage Control Systems Mod 2, I suppose, if you could deal with the 15 second rudder shift time, um, this could be an interesting choice, especially if you're looking at doing a zombie build. The ship does ha so have the, the better um, heal on it, and um, 
I could see that being a viable build if you really wanted to. That's going to decrease the time it takes to extinguish fires by 15%, as well as decrease the time it takes to recover from floods by 15%. In the last slot, I am running Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 10% reduction in your detection range, which gives you that 10.9 kilometer range. The... Other upside of this is that uh, enemies shooting at you will see a 5% increase in the dispersion of the shells fired at you. Um, eh, you don't really notice that too much. Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1. I, I really don't think that this ship's benefit is in any form of tanking role. Um, <coughs> assured Acquisition range of enemy ships going to 3 kilometers. That's not going to really give you much. 20% increase to your overall spotting range. That's that gray cone. I mean, you can already see further than you can shoot. Uh, and 20% increase to the ra spotting range of torpedoes. That has its uses, but the ship is not a frontline ship. So chances of you seeing a whole lot of torpedoes, at least early on, are very low if you're playing the ship right. Uh, later on, it might have some uses, but then again, so does just plain old map awareness. Uh, but that's just me. You could run it if you want and see if it works, but I personally would recommend Concealment Systems Mod 1. Okay, that's enough of looking at that. Uh, let's go look over here and let's look at this heal. You can see it restores 302 hit points per second. That's going to be without the uh, flag. So we'll throw the flag on here. Should boost it by, I think, 20%. Uh, 363, that's not too shabby. Uh, 28 second active time, reload time of 80 seconds, but five total charges. That's that's pretty useful. So, all right, let's go look at the ship in a battle video. All right, so as I said in the first part of this video, you know, I'm not a real big fan of this ship. Uh, it just doesn't give you any real advantages over the tier, uh, tier 7 King George V. This match is actually going to be a tier 6, well... <laughs> If you saw that correctly, that was actually a New York on my team. So I guess it's technically a tier five through tier eight match, uh, but we are top tier. And I think a large part of the reason why this match went as well as it did is because of that. When this ship gets up tiered, it is brutally bad. It is really hard to play the ship well. Um, so a couple key takeaways from this video before we actually get into the video. Uh, map positioning is absolutely critical to maximizing your damage potential while minimizing the amount of fire you can take. We are going to see some decisions being made in this that allows us to reposition correctly to, uh, you know, maximize our damage potential. Now, the map is Land of Fire, and uh, this map has some interesting strategies for battleships. We're going to start off by going towards what would be the sea cap if this was domination, basically the east part of this, the 8, 9, and 10 lines. We're not going to make it anywhere near the 9 and 10 lines, but, um, well, you, you'll see. Um, accuracy on the ship, very frustrating. It, it does seem to get better with proper aim, and uh, I, I don't know, guys. I just don't... <laughs> I, it, it's not consistent. Like, one shot to another, you'll end up, you know, you'll have your AP, your HE that just seems to just cluster real crazy, and then the next shot you take, it's all over the screen. And it makes absolutely no sense for gun mounts like this to behave that way. Um, triple mounts usually had pretty good accuracy in real life, uh, and I'm sure that the accuracy issue is a balancing issue, but... I guess I haven't really looked at the ship to, to see what its ship stats are like. I'm, I'm guessing, though, that the ship probably doesn't fare too well in terms of overall stats. So we are still headed over to the, uh, you know, 7-8 line. And, well, we finally got some targets popping up here. We got ourselves a low Yang. We've got AP loaded, but that's not really that big of an issue, believe it or not. Uh, AP... It seems to, to do all right, even on broadside destroyers. Not that we could actually hit him. He managed to turn away there. I think we overled him a little bit, but eh, it is what it is. So we're going to go... Ooh, Fubuki. Well, okay, so we know battleship that the battleships are way off in the distance there, but more importantly, we got to worry about destroyers in this mix. And Magi is sailing away. Okay, what about New Orleans? Well, we're going to shoot at the New Orleans. We got HE loaded. 
Uh, Bubuki is a little bit closer, but not close enough to get torpedoes in, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, oh boy, we've got aircraft coming in. Missed with our HE at this point. I am not really surprised by this, but turning away from all these, expecting these, uh, d these bombers to come in towards me, and no, they are more interested in Mr. Spender there than they are in me. <laughs> not that I'm complaining too much. Uh, this ship needs all the help that it can. So off to start, you know, we've got ourselves a, a team that is, um, well, they're kind of camping up by our by our cap, and that's fine. You know, this is standard battles. We don't really need to, to push if we don't want to. We just kind of got to be cautious. So random shell break there on the deck of the New Orleans. Um, I'm sure somebody will probably replay that and go, nah, you hit the front guns. I don't think so, and even if I did, I think it would have taken out more than an anti-aircraft gun mount. But okay, so we got one shell hit out of that whole ordeal and it managed to get us nothing for damage and destroyed an AA gun. Woo! Okay, second salvo. Three hits, 6,000 damage with HE. All right, well, that's finally respectable. Um, it's really not... <laughs> um, it, it's all right. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. So, oh, managed to avoid getting fire. Now, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to get my team to, to push their cap because their whole team has basically come over to where we are, and that's that's a pretty common tactic. Now, with this, there's some disadvantages. Uh, obviously, the biggest disadvantage is the fact that we are the only battleship over here that is of the proper tier for this match. And, uh, there is a New York up here, whom I feel absolutely sorry for. We have a North Carolina that's slowly getting over here. But our other North Carolina interprets are headed off to the west. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to reposition ourselves and see if we can't maybe take a little bit better advantage of the map position. And there's me taking a shell for the hipper, even though that New Orleans did not see me. And 3k there on two normal pens and a fire. However, I suspect that that fire is going to get repaired. Yep, there it goes. So now we're back to where we were before. You also note that this ship has really bad gun arcs, and that's a carryover from King George V. That's really not a surprise to anyone who is paying attention. And shoot at the Fubuki, but she goes down. Probably wouldn't have hit her anyway. You see that dispersion? That was rough. So at this point, their whole team is basically over here, and this North Carolina is finally coming in. Well, I don't... I kind of sort of coming this way new york okay maybe but they're really not in a hurry to push and i'm i'm content with this um again shooting at the new orleans here trying to get some damage i get that he's broadside but he is what i had loaded and we get one hit for a thousand damage because he turned away at the last minute which is unfortunate i would have liked to have seen what that would have done in terms of damage so at this point uh well graf Spee, it's a ship that eventually I'll get around to doing a how to play video on, or I guess a premium ship review, but look at that, he just takes 6k off. Two shell hits and just 6k gone. That's almost more damage than I've done in this battle. <laughs> so we are actively planning on repositioning ourselves, and uh, well, you'll see the, the reasons why. With their whole team basically concentrated off this way, I've got nothing to shoot at but noses. And this ship's accuracy is not good enough to shoot at the noses of ships that are approaching you. So that means that we got to get a little bit more creative with what we are shooting at. The short range is also a huge liability, and I really am frustrated by it. Um, but that's not something that's uh, really unusual. Thankfully, we've, only, we've got a 10.9 kilometer detection range to handle that. That's at least a bonus and an upside. Uh... Points-wise, we're down in points because they've managed to sink a battleship, which I think was the North Carolina on the other side? Yeah, it must have been. Uh, that's probably because their North Carolina is there, and he is about to die, which is fine by me. Interesting to note, we do have a Kutuzov here, or Kutuzov. I think it's Kutuzov. <laughs> we have a, uh, a premium Russian... 
cruiser in the smoke up here that we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if we can't uh, sneak up on. With 10.9 kilometer detection range, yeah, I think we can handle We got AP loaded, and I'm kind of hoping he makes a turn here without getting me, without detecting me, but, uh, well, he kind of does. Yeah, look at this. All right. So perfect deflection shot. And, well, okay, so we did 14,000 damage and the guns actually decided to cooperate for once. But he shoots at me and lands two shell hits and does 2k in damage. Wow. Well, somebody just smacked him. Okay, so what's next? Well, we're going to try and continue to shoot at him, especially since he's slowing down. Okay. And now we can see the guns are a little less cooperative. Lots of bounces there off of superior selenium armor. We're going to go ahead and pop our heal because we kind of need it. But Mr. Heavy Metal Juggernaut... Um, you're, you've become the focus. <laughs> Especially since the only other ship over here is right now is this New Orleans and this Graf Spee is coming over to play, but I can handle uh, three cruisers a lot better than I can handle the four battleships that are over there. So, okay, fine. Katusov exposing a broadside, or at least a little bit of one. Hey, huzzah! We finally got a kill. 31,797 damage. We got our first kill. Looking around for other targets to shoot at. Kind of hoping against all hopes that we'll disappear here in a second, but look at this. Graf Spee is coming back to try and keep us from their cap. We also got this Turpitz that's up here by me, and hopefully between the two of us we can actually uh, encroach on their cap and force them back, which, well, maybe. We'll see. Uh, kind of waiting for the Graf Spee to turn. Now, Graf Spee has 8k Torps. There's the turn. Again, that, that perfect deflection shot and being super patient good accuracy finally got double citadel thirty-one thousand damage um not doing a really good job of showing how the the shells are not cooperative am i um ooh, 1300 hit points so we bowed into this turpitz so that uh we minimize the damage we take from him but this uh graf Spee is just okay fine sail broadside you also notice that i have stopped or at least tried to down goes the graf Spee. Um, slowing down here, I, I realize there's aircraft in the area, but my options are either go out and be exposed to all sorts of very, very powerful battleships that probably would eat this ship alive, or see if I can't get this Turpitz to step up and tank a little bit, because, uh, let's be honest, we're not the best ship for tanking. So there's a little bit more of the dispersion. Oop, there's the Graf Spee Torps. And 5k off that North Carolina, but that's really not that impressive considering what the North Carolina could have done with that much, uh, with, th with that profile. Uh, Lo Yang. Ooh. I am a big fan of shooting at destroyers before shooting at anything else, and the Lo Yang keeps coming in and out of my detection range, which is mildly annoying. Um... We should probably shoot at him though, because he is a battle or uh, a destroyer. And yes, let's let's shoot at him. See what happens. Okay, he's slowing down and turning away. Oh no! Ooh! <laughs> yeah, normal pen, uh, you know, is balance. So now we've got ourselves a North Carolina that is it, once again exposing broadside to us, and I'm trying to turn this ship over. To try and get it, Lo Yang launched Torps like I thought he would, actually bowing into him. And maybe, just maybe, we can get lucky. Oh, we got HE loaded. Man, that's unfortunate. Wouldn't have helped. <laughs> two hits, two normal pens, not enough to get a fire, apparently. Speaking of fire, we are still burning on ours, which is about to go away, thankfully. And down goes their North Carolina. So now we got a couple of options, especially since we just stealthed up, which is very important for this ship. It allows you to actually get your heal away, and that's one tactic that you, you've you got to learn when to push and when not to push. So one of the hardest aspects of this ship to get used to... Oop, two fires there on the turpets. 2k damage right away. Uh, had to burn his repair, so that'll be interesting. But one of the tactics that's really hard to learn is is pushing and being at that boundary. Now, if you're a you if you're a, a avid Iowa or Missouri player, 
it's not going to be too much of a surprise to you because uh, playing at your detection range is basically how you play that ship well. There's a fire on the turpits, so now he will burn for a while. In addition to the flood he most likely received from that torpedo he ate. Um, so playing at your detection range and using that to your advantage to try and heal up, that is a very U.S. trait. One normal pen, only two, uh, two things taken out. All right. Okay, so shoot again. And again, you can see I'm having to close ranges. <laughs> One normal pen and three shell shatters for zero damage. Having to close range to really make use of these guns. Really quite frustrating. Uh, AP-wise, uh, it, it does okay, but, you know, again, you, you're really hoping that uh, you can catch a ship at the perfect angle. Shot at this Arizona now, switching back to AP, hoping to, uh, oop, got a fire on the Arizona there, hoping to maybe catch this Perth. He's sitting in his smoke, I mean, his really short duration smoke, but hoping that we can uh, get him taken care of. And you can see how we used our map positioning to actually uh, put us in the right place. Now, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage here because, well, um, <laughs> this Arizona, if he was firing AP, would be lopping off huge chunks of hit points. Not actually sh able to shoot or hit me. I don't know what that was all about. Up to 998,986 damage. No, he missed again. And there's the Ryojo. RJ, what are you doing? Uh, overall shell pen, I, I feel like this kind of returns us back into the days of the, the Queen Elizabeth and War Spite, where um, your shells might as well as not do any damage, because it either bounces or it just flat doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't pen, it just shatters. Some of the worst AP in the game uh, just pure AP volume of fire is what we get. Okay, my my favorite deflection shot that usually gives me pretty good accuracy. Their carrier is ignoring me, by the way. Uh, two overpens. That's that's about what I would expect, shooting at a light cruiser there. And well... Okay. Hmm, who do I shoot at? Ryojo? Perth? We're gonna shoot at the Perth. We're gonna go broadside because this uh, Arizona is not shooting... We're not really going broadside, but this Arizona is not shooting uh, AP at me, so I don't have a whole lot to worry about with regards to anything aside from that. 618 hit points, are you serious? Oh, man. Kind of wish this North Carolina on our team was a little bit closer to help tank some of the damage, but, uh, well, he's not. We're just going to continue charging, because let's face it, the, none of these ships are a super big threat except for the carrier. The Perth might as well be dead, which should be coming any moment. There he is. Now we're on to the Ryojo, whom, well, you're a bit close. <laughs> uh, but look at this, taking 8k off. Every HE salvo is taking 8k. Well, I have to burn a repair there. Trying to, uh, well, for one, stay alive, but two overpens on a Ryojo. Not exactly broadside, but trying to shoot down as many of these uh, torpedo bombers as I can. And while I'm doing that, I'm trying to engage the Arizona. Now, the Arizona's front armor can be overmatched by 15-inch guns, so that's not an issue. However, oh boy, oh boy. Well, we are definitely not ducking between that, and we don't have a repair party up, so we are basically dead. <laughs> It's just a matter of time before it actually happens. And there's the Ryojo. Can we get the Kraken out of this? Can we get a Kraken? No. <laughs> we'll call it 125,000 damage. Uh, basically, guys, uh, you know, this ship shows it in a pretty positive light. This game shows the ship in a pretty positive light. I'm really not a fan of this ship. It took me forever to get this battle. Um, I... I'm just It's not a comfortable ship to play. It, Like I said, it is basically a King George V with less accurate guns. And I just... It's not reliable. The matchmaking does not uh, benefit the ship at all. And as a result of that, well... The, the, the matchmaking... Uh, you, you, you don't get to use that concealment nearly as easily. The matchmaking itself is worse, so... 
overall the ship is just kind of a at best a side grade meaning it's not an upgrade it's not a downgrade at worst it's a downgrade not a very good ship in my opinion and for its tier is very hard to play dealing with the gun accuracy is one of the more annoying aspects of this ship well, arizona eating torpedoes from fubuki well we got torpedoes inbound from the yeah there they from the hipper so uh, I, I don't know you guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think I, I like i said i personally am not a fan of this ship it's just not the ship for me and i will not regret selling it in one iota it's just not a fan and, and um yeah i mean it is what it is there, there's no way i'll ever be a fan of this ship unless they buff the accuracy finally the game ends and we ended with 124,986. Nope. 124,670. 1,878 base XP, which is pretty good. Top of the team, anyway. And 1.2 million potential damage. There's a credits and XP screen. Anyway, guys, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.